Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 24. Day 3024, 3 is to signify that we are in the third edition, third edition, day 24. The problems that we are going to solve today are from day, page number 229 through page 231. Let's turn to page number 229. Page 229. These problems that you see, these problems that we are going to do today from day two, 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 from page 229 to 231 are the exact same problems that appeared already in the first and the second edition of the GRE. If you're interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from the first edition from day number 92 and 93. Let's take a look at it. First problem that you see there on page number 229, that's problem number 9. Problem number 9, they refer to it as 1.7.9. 1.7.9. It says, 13 is what percent what percent of 20 essentially what we're interested in here is percentage of this ratio of this of this fraction rather than that ratio of this fraction 13 over 20 and we know what percent means percent means out of 100 if we can make the bottom into 100 we are all done because that's what percent means the word percent means per 100 how can we convert the 20 into 100 it's very simple. It's very simple. Just multiply top and bottom by 5. If we multiply top and bottom by 5, we end up with 65 over 100. And there is our answer. It's 65%. It's 65%. Let's do number 10. Let's do problem number 10. It says, it says 12.9 is what percent of 150? 12.9 is what percent of 150? In something like this, we have no choice but to actually uh, set it up in a classical way. We can't just take a shortcut like we did up, up here. So we're going to have to set it up as an equation. So here we go. 12.9 is means equal. What is our unknown? We represent the unknown with letter X. Percent means over 100. Off means times and then 150. Let's separate the x. Let's separate the x. So it's going to be 100 times 129. Or we can reduce it right now here. Let's divide top and bottom by 50. If we divide top and bottom by 50, 150 becomes 3 and 100 becomes 2. So what we end up is 12.9 equals 3 over 2, 3 over 2 x. Now let's cross. We could have cross multiplied with earlier, or we can do it here. So x is simply going to be 2 times 1.29, 2 times 1, or 12 point rather, over 3, over 3. 12.9 is divisible by 3. I don't know if you can see it, 12 is divisible by 3 and 9 is divisible by 3. So let's divide top and bottom by 3. 12 has 4 3's, then we have our decimal, bring it up, and 9 has 3 3. So it's 4.3 times 2, 4.3 times 3 is going to be 8.6. So the question was 12.9 is what percent of 150? We have an answer now. Where it says what, the unknown part, we have the answer. We can replace this thing where the what appears, replace it with the answer. What we are claiming here, what we are claiming 8.6. And this is what it reads. What it reads is that 12.9 is 8.6% of 150. Do you understand? The number that the, the answer that we arrived at, that itself actually is a percentage because that's what we were solving for. That is a percentage. Let's do number 11. Number 11 says, oh, this is too silly, 30% of 350. They're asking for 30% of 350 is how much? But well, we know 10%, we know 10% is equal to 35. Or if you like, I can write the whole sentence if you like. 10% of 350 
we know is 35. Of course we know that. We are not interested in 10%, we are interested in finding out 30%. So what do we do? I just multiply the entire equation by 3. Multiply this equation, this side of the equation by 3, now we have 30%. And if you're going to multiply this side of the equation by 3, we must do the same thing here. And there is our answer. There is our answer. And how much is 35 times 3? Well, let's find out. We know 30 times 3, 30 times 3 is 90, and 3 times 5 is going to be 15. So it's going to be 105. 30%, 30% of, it turns out 30% of 350, I'm going to raise the other part because it's getting to be too crowded. So what it says is that 30% of 350 is simply 35 times 3 and 35 times 3 is very simple. 30 times 3 is 90 and 3 times 5 is 15, so 90 plus 15 is 105. Let's do the next one. That was number 11. That was number 11. Let's do number 12. Number 12 says 15 is 60% of what? 15 is 60% of what? Let's set it up again if you like. If, you, if you're unable to see it right away, let's set it up. If you're unable to see a shortcut, here's what it's going to be. 15 is, is means equal, 60% means over 100 of means times and x what is our unknown. We can reduce it here or we can we can cross multiply and then reduce it. Let's separate the x. So 100 times 15. Don't write it as 1500. Don't write it as 1500. Just leave it like this. Over 60. Let's divide top and bottom. Let's divide top and bottom by 15. 15 goes away and 60 has 4 15s. Let's divide top and bottom by 4. 4 goes away and 100 has 25. 100 has 25 fours. 25 fours are 100, of course. That's it, x equals 25. x equals 25. So this is what we're claiming. What we're claiming is that 15, what we're claiming is 15 is 60% of 25. 15 is 16, 15 is 60 percent of 25, and that makes sense. That makes perfect sense if you think about it, because what is 25? 25 is essentially 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5, isn't it? That's what 25 is. And 15 is 1, 2, 3. 3 out of 5. 15 is 15 is 3 out of 5. is 3 out of 5. 3 fifth of 25. 15 is 3 fifth of 25, which makes sense because 3 fifth is simply 60%. 15 is 60% of 25. Because that's what 3 fifth is, a fifth of something, a fifth of something is 20%, so 3 fifth must be 60%. Right. We don't need that much explanation, it's a very simple problem. Number 13. Let's move on to number 13. And number 13 appears on the next page. Number 13. What is number 13? Number 13 is also on the next page. We are on page number 330. We have a page number 230 rather, not 330. Let's see what 13 has to say. 13 says 15 is 4% of 5. Now, if you, if, you, if you insist, we could actually set it up like this equation, but we're not going to do that. It is too silly. You, you, you should be able to see that, you should be able to see that 5 is, 5 is 100% of 5. Of course, 5 is 100% of 5. And therefore, 15, which is 3 times 5, 15 is 3 times 5. 15 is going to be 300% of 5. 15 is 300 percent of 5. 10 would have been 200 percent because 10 is uh, 10 is 2 times the uh, amount. Uh, 2 times uh, 2 times any amount is 200 percent of the amount. 15 is 3 times the amount is 300 percent. 15. 15 is 300 percent of 5. You understand? Don't reach for the calculator every single time on something so simple.
this is number 14 number 14 says number 14 says 250% of 16 is what? 250% of 16 is what? Well, we know we know 100% 100% of 16 is 16 we know that, right? I'm not going to write out the entire thing 100% of 16 is 16 that's what we're talking about 100% when we say 100% we take 100% of 16 is 16 of course we don't want 100% we want 250% so let's build it up another 100% another 100% would be another 16 so far so good what happened to my eraser thingy I just had it in my hand just give me a second that's not it I can't believe it. I just had it in my hand. Anyway, so that's up to 200%. We need we need another 50%. And that's if 100% is 16, 50% is going to be 8. And we add them all up. So 250% is going to be 16 plus 16 plus 8. 16 plus 16 is 32. 32 plus 8 is 40. So that's one way of doing it. That's one way of doing it. The bloody thing just couldn't disappear, could it? Another way, another way to take care of the, another way to take care of the, I'm just gonna make a new one if you just give me a second, because I need to, I need to have something in my hand to arrange things, it's just my habit. I feel awkward, I sit out it. So, another way actually to do this thing is to set it up in a classical manner. If you do set it up in a classical manner, here's, here's our equation, 250%, 200, 200, I shouldn't have bought, done both of them at the same time, it's 200, the first, first word here is 200, 50 percent means over 100, of means times, 16 is 16, is means equal, and what is our unknown. Voila. And we can work on this thing and it's going to give us the same answer. Let's divide top and bottom by 10, so the 0 goes away, let's divide top and bottom by 5, 25 becomes 5 and 10 becomes 2. Let's divide top and bottom by 2, and 2 is going to go away, and 16 is going to become 8. There you go, 8 fives are 40. 8 fives are 40. It's up to you. If you don't like this method, you can do it in a very classical manner. If somebody asks you what is 250% or something, just, just, just build it up. 100%, 100%, 50%. What is 240 and 240%? Just 100%, 100%, 40%. It's very simple. Let's do number 15. Number 15. What does number 15 say? Number 15 is on the next page and it's a it's a it's a it's a word problem. We are on page number 231. Page 231. And it's a word problem. It says that the value of mutual fund, value of a mutual fund. Went up by 12%. Value of mutual fund went up by 12%, and we are told that the initial, initial, initial value was 1,300. Question simply is, what's the final figure? What is the final figure? Let's find out, shall we? If you ever have trouble, if you ever have trouble deciphering my handwriting, you have absolutely, you have absolutely no right to complain about it, because I always make a point of reading what I write. So as long as you pay attention, I always read what I write on the blackboard. In the event that you have trouble reading my handwriting, this says final figure. F I G is is an abbreviation for figure. The question is, please, what's the final figure? Let's find out, shall we? Enough of the talk. Well, we, look, we know that it went up by 12%. We know it went up by 12%. We know 10%. We know 10% of 1300. I'm not going to write the whole thing here, but we're talking about 1300. Yeah? 10% of 1300 is 130. We know that. We also know that 1% of 1300 is 
We also know that 1% of 1300 is just 13. So far we have 11%, we want 12%. Another 1% would be around the 13. So that, let's add them up, we get 6, 5 and 1. And that represents the 12%. That's how much it went up by. That's how much it went up by. Therefore the final figure, therefore, therefore, the, the final figure would simply be how much it went up by? It went up by 156, and what you started out with, which was 1300. We started out with 1300, and then it increased in value by 12%, which we found out works out to be 156. So the final figure is going to be 6, 5, 4, looks like 1456. The value of the mutual fund now is 1456. Let's do number 16 on the same page. Number 16. Number 16 says that we have a school and we are told that the enrollment enrollment went down one year by 8%. We are told that the following year, following year, it was up by 6%. It was up by 6%. The question is, the question simply is, what is the cumulative percentage change? You read the problem yourself. Make sure the book is in front of you. Always make sure that the book is in front of you. Of course, in the in the in the in the book, they make it very elaborate, and the and the and the bloody thing goes on for one, two, three, four, five, six lines. So, so you read the whole thing, but this is the nub of the nub of the story. That is the gist of it. That is the gist of this story, that's the essence of it. That is, as I said, the nub of the story. I don't know why we do this thing, because now we have to make a quick digression. Did we ever learn the word nub, N-U-B, nub, in our vocabulary lessons? Answer is yes, we did learn it. Vocabulary, day number 72. If you are interested in improving your vocabulary, just type in vocabulary words for GRE. One more time, just type in vocabulary words for GRE. Day 72, watch the video and you will learn not only the word uh, NUP, but along with some other useful and good words to help you improve your score in the verbal part of the exam. So that is the nub of the, of the, of the, of the problem, that's the, that's the gist of it. What's the cumulative percentage change? And the answer of course here is not 2%. 2% is going to be one of the answer choices. And that's the answer for the suckers, the suckers answer. Because people who said 2%, they say, well, it went up by 8. Oh, sorry, they would say negative 2%. They would say that, uh, it, it, what was the cumulative change, or how much did it go down by? And, and the sucker answer is, it went down by 2%. Because it says, it went down one year for 8%, the following year it went up by 6%. So change is 2%. No, it's not. No, it's not. Because when it goes down by 8%, we take 2% of the new, we take 6% of the new figure. It goes up. It goes up by 6% of not the original amount, not the initial amount, but the new amount. Let's find out what the answer is, okay, shall we? So if we start out with 100, if we start out with 100, first it goes down by 8%. If it goes down by 8%, 8% 8 of 100 is 8, which is very easy. So it becomes 92. Then it goes up by 6%. So now we have to figure out 6% of 92. Let's do it here. 6% of 92. Don't worry about the decimal right now. Just do it out like this. 6 to the 12, 2, carry 1, 9, 6, uh, 9, 6, uh, 54. How do I know that? 9, 6 is a 54? Because I know 10, 6 are 60. If you have 10, 6s, that, that's 60. We don't have 10, 6s, we have 9, 6s, so 60 minus 6 would be 54. 54 plus 1 is 55. 55. 55. What does this tell you? That 55, that 55, this is where you have to understand, that 55 is actually 
5.62. Even if you don't show the water, you should understand that 6% of this amount is going to be 5 point something. Why? Because we're talking about 6%, but we're trying to figure out a 6%, which was technically like this. 0 0.06. So we have to move this thing, where the decimal was here, move it two places. It's 5.52. So the new amount was 92 at the end of the first year. Then it goes up by 6%, 6% of 92 is this amount. We add that amount, 6%. And this amount represents 6% of 92. So we have 97.52, 97.52, we started out with 100%, so what was the cumulative change? The cumulative change is, cumulative change is approximately 2.5%, approximately 2.5%, because this is 97.5%, so we started out with 100, we started out with 100, and we ended up at 97.5, so it went down by about 2.5%. It did not go down by 2%, it went down by 2.5%, because we're taking 6% of 92. Do you understand? Had it gone up by, had it gone up by 6% of 100, 6% of 100 would have been 6, and we would have added 6 here, and it would have been 92 plus 6 would have been 98. But now we're taking 6% of the smaller amount, we're taking 6% of 92. So it, it, it goes down by, by larger percentage, by 8%, and then goes up by 6%, but the net change is negative 2.5%. Negative 2.5%. Let's see what we have after that. Just give me a second. On the following page, they have exercises there, and I, I would prefer not to, do, not to start it right now. Let's keep it separate. It will be better to keep those exercises separate. So tomorrow we'll do the exercises that you see, on page number 232 okay bye now